A client brought me a ruby that had been in her family for many, many years. And she wanted me to create something for this ruby. And you see it's a unique cut. It has a concave to it. Very rarely seen cuts like this. So I proceeded to create a wax. This is the beginning of the wax process. This is just the bulk wax. I want to cut it in somewhat of a shape to begin the, uh, the design process here. You see I'm removing a lot of the bulk of the wax to trim it down. And with this particular design, I wanted to get some light to come up underneath the ruby. So you see the bridge work here. And then I'm testing to make sure that the, uh, the stone fits properly into the setting. And then I begin the detailing of the ring. This is the wax sculpting process here that really requires a lot of time and, and detail and, and patience. Here I'm going to design some sort of a scroll work I felt was appropriate with this particular ring. And here you see me adding wax onto my drawing there, onto the wax, which is a little bit of a scroll pattern. I want to make this ring look like it was hand forged and ancient. Now that the wax is pretty much completed, I'll double check that the stone fits properly in there with just a little bit of uh, snug fit. And then we'll go through and I'll make sure all the design is completed on both sides. And here you see me spruing up the ring. This is uh, attaching it to a sprue base. And you put a flask over it, which is a steel tube. And this allows me to pour a plaster into the steel tube. And here you see me mixing the plaster. It's a water powder mixture, which creates bubbles that needs to be removed. So here's your vacuum that removes the bubbles. And I'll gently pour it over the wax. Be careful, you don't want to damage the wax at this point. And I'll debubbleize it again because we created air by pouring it back into the glass. And here I'm going to let it set to, to dry anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. Now is the metal procedure here. I need to calculate how much metal I'm going to need. And this is 18 karat shot, which allows me to weigh it up. Now my flask is going to go into the oven. And the oven will fluctuate in temperatures from 500 to 1200 to 1000. And here at 1000 degrees, you'll see me remove the flask. And the wax is then burnt out. And this is the hole remaining from where the wax once was. Now it's inserted into a centrifugal force machine that has a crucible connected to it. And in the crucible is the metal. The 18 karat gold's in the crucible there. You see me melting. And once it's molten, I'll release the pin and it'll spin around and then force that 18 karat gold to fill that cavity in the plastic. And here you see it nice and red, the molten metal. I'll let it cool a little while. Now I can quench it in water, which will then allow it to just break apart. And here you can see the form in an 18 karat gold now. And if you're lucky, it looks exactly like your wax. And here I uh, need to steam clean the the piece to get remove any kind of excess plaster that might be on it. And then there's a pickling process which removes oxidation that might be left on it. And here I uh, remove the excess metal. And this is what I call the, the gold button which is left over. I'll put that aside and I'll use it on the next project. Now here you see me using a abrasive wheel. I use several types of abrasive wheels, different shapes, kind of remove the rough spots that might be left on it. And I'll go through and touch it here and there just to be sure that everything's in good order and original design is coming through as I had hoped for. Now there's a polishing. And polishing requires a rouge that you apply to the wheels. And here you see me using a small wheel that I'm going to clean up the detail real good with. And then there's a larger wheel and you have to be uh, a little smoother with your rhythm so you don't put any flat spots on the design. You want to flow real, real nicely with this particular wheel. And then back to the small wheel, just get you the detail. You can get into the details a lot easier with the small wheel. And this will put a sheen on it that you, you normally see in jewelry and there you see it. Now I've got an ultrasonic which removes the rouge that's applied by the polisher and just remove it and I'll usually brush it a little bit help remove that and then I'll steam clean it once again
Now, the final process of putting the stone into the piece. When it comes out as, as you pictured you'd wanted it to, that's when it's really satisfying to deliver to the customer. You can see more of my work in national publications like the Designer Showcase and online at craigdearon.com.